Good morning, everyone. Uh, after the diabetes, uh, today I am going to talk about another important disorders of endocrine, that is the thyroid disorder. Uh, so it is important to know about how to approach a patient with a thyroid disorders. So if you see the pattern of thyroid disorder in the tertiary care center in our hospital BPKHS, this study was uh, done in 2015. It was a retrospective analysis done in the biochemistry department from of a one year duration and among the 2104 patients you can see in this chart the commonest thyroid disorder was a hypothyroidism over hypothyroidism as you all know that it was 16.49 percent followed by 2.9 percent of subclinical hypothyroidism and followed by 6.06 percent of subclinical hypothyroidism so prevalence of hypothyroidism was highest as compared to other thyroid disorder in our BBKHS and females was also more prone to thyroid disorders as compared to male and the difference was significant. So it is similar to other parts of the world. So whenever the patient of thyroid disorder comes to your OPD, you can diagnose a patient when they come to the door itself. How? You can see a patient of hypothyroid visually will be lazy, fat, and she will be having swelling of legs, he or she. But in the patient of hyperthyroidism present to OPD, they will be anxious, they will be thin, they will be having proptosis of the eye. So clinically you can guess this patient is directly a hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. But there should be some confirmatory test. So for that you use lab test. So which lab to choose? This is a very important question. So whenever there is a symptoms and signs of hypo or hyperthyroidism or swelling in the neck, you have to order the test. So basically what you order is total 3, 4, T3 or free T3, total T4 or free T4 or TSH. And which lab to choose? So it depends upon the methods of estimation of hormones. Best method is the equilibrium dialysis is the gold standard of TSS, which is not available here, only in the western countries available, followed by radio immunization third and fourth generation is the best. This is also not available in our part Nepal, but in India and western countries available. And the test which is done in most of the lab is ELISA, but it is not adequate. Okay, we cannot say this is not bad. Uh, this is bad or uh, we, can, we cannot be reliable on this test but if you are doing the ELISA test the patient should have to be in empty stomach when you are doing a ELISA test. So the widely followed method in BPKHS or standard method gold standard method in Nepal and India is Kiklia method or chemo immunoluminescence immunoassay method. But this test is expensive and less widely available. It is only available in some big labs or institutes institute like BPKHS. So another important thing in diagnosis of thyroid disorder is how to interpret this lab results. So people must be having difficulties, no? So there is a you can play a game now, nine square game. This is very easy, which helps table or game square game that helps in knowing the diagnosis of thyroid disorders. It is as per American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists AEC and India Thyroid Society guidelines. So if you see this table or nine square table, you can see in the X axis you can see the TSH and in the Y axis you can see FT4. So whenever the TSS is normal and FT4 or T3 is normal, it is what? It is euthyroid. So whenever there is high TSS and normal decreased T4, you can see low low green color, no? Then is a primary hypothyroidism. So whenever there is high T4 and low TSS, it is a primary hypothyroid. So it's so easy, no? So whenever there is both T4 and TSS is low, this is secondary hypothyroid. Likewise, if T4 is high and TSH is also 
high. This is the second in hypothyroid. If TSS is normal but T4 is low, this is sub TSS is suppressed and T3, T4 is normal, then it is subclinical hypothyroid. If TSS is high and T3, T4 is normal, then it is subclinical hypothyroid. So it is very easy with this table. Okay, if you make this table in OPD and make y axis and uh, x axis, you can be easily diagnosed. So if TSS is high or low and T3 is high or low and this is non thyroid illness or CQ thyroid syndrome, on you can say that is mainly seen patient with the ICU patient. And if T4 is high and TSS is high or it, patient might be on l or TSS is low, patient might be having non thyroid illness or patient might be on l -troxine. So this is the 9 square game. So you people must be finding very easy with this table. So now let's discuss the case. There is a 32 year old lady married for 8 years, comes with infertility, which is a basic problem in our part of the world or everywhere in the world and is mainly referral by the gynae department most of these cases with the thyroid abnormality. So this patient clinically is unremarkable finding but the patient have FTV is 1.2 is the normal TSH is 6 means slightly high up to our level lab has the normal level of TSH is up to 5 micro per international volumeter. So what is the diagnosis? So if you follow the 9 square table in this, TSH is very high and FT4 is normal. Means what? Means TSH is high and FT4 is normal means subclinical hypothyroid. So this lady is having subclinical hypothyroidism. So would you treat this lady? So let's discuss that. So subclinical hypothyroid diagnosed as TSS is high and FTV is normal without minimal clinical signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism or no signs clinical signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism. Since this patient is having infertility, we have to start the treatment with the thyroxine in this patient. So what are the other indication of starting subclinical hypothyroidism we will be discussing in subsequent slides. So whenever you are treating a patient with subclinical hypothyroidism, there are various controversies to consciousness, consciousness. What is consciousness? It is definitely defined as or accepted as opinion or decision among a group of people. But whenever there is a op decision, opinion, there is always a controversy. So what is controversy? It is a lot of disagreement or argument about something usually because it affects or is important to many people. So what are the controversies to the treatment of or in the di from diagnosis to the treatment of subclinical hypothyroid. So controversy still starts from definition and TSS level. Another controversy is there is a controversy in the screening and diagnosis of subclinical hypothyroidism. Another controversy is the symptoms. As, a, as I already told in definition, they might have a symptoms or they do not have a symptoms or minimal symptoms. So there is controversy there also. And there are controversies with, with patient to treat, with comorbidity treat. So this is also a, one of the controversies. And at last, there are various guidelines and various treatment issues which we will be discussing in subsequent slides. So if, if you see the definition of subclinical hypothyroidism, what is the controversy? It is defined as elevated TSS with a serum FT4 level with a reference range. So what is the reference, normal reference range? There is a controversy. But what the consensus had told is after the meeting or the decision, when thyroid function test has been stable for a week along with the above definitions, more the hypothalamic thyroid axis is normal and there is absence of recent or ongoing fever illness. This is known as subclinical hypothyroidism. Why there is a controversy in upper limit of TSS? Because TSS can raise in all these following conditions. That's why there is a con controversy. So you have to rule out all these conditions before labeling the patient of subclinical hypothyroidism. So you have to repeat twice the test of thyroid function test before labeling the patient of subclinical hypothyroidism. So the patient can have high TSS when there is a heterophil antibody, SES variabilities. They can also have a high TSS following thyrotoxic phase in thyroiditis and all the listed diseases or condition there. Also more morbid obesity patient also have a high TSS because of high leptin mediated. So what happens in subclinical hypothyroidism? 
Subclinical hypothyroidism rewards the youth thyroid stress. 60% of patients, depending on TSS level, we don't require, tre require treatment on such patients. But 1 to 5% of patients might develop primary hypothyroidism. That's why it is very necessary to treat subclinical hypothyroidism. So, when do you screen a patient with the symptoms and signs of hypothyroidism or subclinical hypothyroidism? There are various screening recommendations. So, if you see this list, American Thyroid Fund Association, U.S. Preventive Task Force, Royal College of Physicians of London. Among them, we I would prefer to American Thyroid Association guidelines for screening recommendation. So, with every young woman and man more than 35 years of age should be screened initially for thyroid function tests, whether they have symptoms or not, and if they are having positive thyroid function uh, disorders, such as hypo or hypothyroidism, then we have to screen accordingly but if they are not positive then we have to screen every five years regarding the controversy in subclinical hypothyroidism and symptoms they can present with these minimal symptoms like not the classical symptoms hypothyroid like cold intolerance or constipation they can present with poor memory slow thinking fatigue muscle weakness or muscle cramps okay one of the important issues in controversies is whether to treat this condition, whether patient is having bone health, what is the regarding the bone health of the patient with subclinical hypothyroidism, mental well-being, pregnancy, and cardiovascular risk, heart failure, metabolic syndrome, and mortality issues. If you see this table, what is the role of thyroxine treatment in subclinical hypothyroidism? So, according to the evidence, bone health. In subclinical hypothyroidism, patients are more risk for hip fractures. But whether to give thyroxine such subclinical hypothyroidism, there is no studies there. So they don't definitely roll. Thyroid cancer is similar. But in the patient of infertility and miscarriage, you have to treat the patient of subclinical hypothyroidism. Likewise, if pregnancy complication and preterm delivery, pregnancy loss is there, you have to treat the patient with subclinical hypothyroidism. So there are various conditions where you treat the patient with a subclinical hypothyroidism. You can list like this, likewise. One is if the patient has infertility miscarriage, if the patient has a pregnancy, if the patient antibody, antibody is positive, if the patient has dyslipidemia, if the patient is um, psychiatric morbidities, and if the patient is planning for pregnancy, these are the important condition or diseases you have to treat the patient with subclinical hypothyroidism. This is a recent uh, approach given for the how to follow up the patient with subclinical hypothyroidism. What I am focusing more on subclinical beginning is most of the patients are subclinical hypothyroidism in all parts of the world in the OPDs. That's why I am telling for subclinical hypothyroidism. So whenever there is a TSS elevated and T4 is normal, normal, then we have to recheck the TSS and FT4 after 8 to 12 weeks. Suddenly don't if they don't have symptoms or other that condition, suddenly don't start with the thyroxine level. So after 8 to 12 weeks, if the report is similar, then you send for the anti tuber antibodies. And if the TSS is normalized, the anti tuber antibody is negative, you don't need to treat the patient with subclinical collapse. You have to monitor on If the anti tuber antibody is positive, then you have to, TSS is normalized, then you have to check the thyroid function annually. No, no need to treat. But if the TSS remains elevated and symptoms of hypothyroid absent, we have to see the level of TSS, if, whether it is less than 10 or more than 10. If more than 10, definitely we have to treat. If the less than 10, there are two conditions. The result can be more than 4.5 to less than 7, or it can be more than 7 to less to 10. So if the range is 4.5 to more than 4.5 to less than 7, no treatment is recommended. But trial of treatment of levothyroxine can be given for three months, and accordingly we can decide. If the TSS level is more than 7 and less than 10, consider the 6-month trial of a treatment according to age. If age is more than less than 70 or patient has anti tuber anti antibody positive and cardiac risk factors. So clear? Another is, so I told if the TS is more than 10, we have to treat the patients. That also now they, what they have divided is if the TS is more than 10 and patient age is less than 70, anti tuber is positive, then we have to start the patient with levothyroxine. But if age is more than 70, you can give only the thyroxine for 6 months and wait and watch. 
But if the symptoms of hypothyroidism is present and TSH is elevated, then we have to consider six month trial of treatment with levothyroxine with TSH goal of less than 2.5. This is primary hypothyroidism. So we have to treat. There is no shortcut. What the guidelines have recommended regarding the treatment of suffering glands so for label. So there are various guidelines saying various things. If you see like this uh, a nice guideline according to the UK, if TS is more than 10 and less than 70 years, they have told to treat. More than 70, TS is more than 70, is more than 70, TS is more than 10, they have told to wait and watch. So you can see here, so it is, depends on different guidelines. So you can follow one. I usually follow American thyroidization and guidelines which I have shown before table.